Welcome back to the Rules of Engagement. We're now into the Q&A section of the show. First question is going to be from Alexi Mackin. And it's, uh, can hallucinations step on force fields? And the answer is yes and no. So, um, hallucinated units that can normally not go on force fields, zealots, stalkers, etc., act like normal zealots and stalkers. Hallucinated units that are massive, archons and, col and uh, colossi, they actually walk over the force fields, but they don't destroy them. It's kind of weird. So, uh, if you lose the units that cannot get through force fields, they still can't get through. If you lose the units that normally break force fields, they can walk over the force fields, but they don't break them. Which is pretty cool. It's a pretty big giveaway if you see an Archon walk over a force field and the force field is still there. It's a hallucinated Archon. So, uh, a cool little fact right there for you guys. Uh, next question is going to be from PoopFeast420. Why is Stardust so damn good? What is it about him that let him win? So, of course, this is referring to uh, DreamHack. Uh, the DreamHack tournament just ended uh, this past weekend. Stardust won a tournament with some very convincing Protoss play. One thing about Stardust's play, mechanically focused 100%. Um, and, and actually, I, I think I talked about this on like two days ago, the broadcast um, during the WCS America. But what separates the... Uh, he, he's a former Kespa player, by the way. I mean, he, he now plays for a, a non-Korean team, but uh, he used to play for Kespa team. What separates the Kespa players from the rest of the world is their mechanics. And what mechanics help you, people think it helps you in a long game, it doesn't. Long game is tactics and strategy and, and, and a lot of other stuff, getting involved in it. Mechanics, as far as macro and micro go, they help you by far the most with time attacks. Stardust hit time attacks with a certain number of units with certain upgrades faster than his opponents were prepared for him. His opponents who didn't have um, uh, you know, the same level of, of mechanical skill weren't able to macro up and, and get the same number of units and, and control them the same level of skill at the same point in the game as Stardust was able to. That was one thing that really, really helped me a lot. The second thing mechanics help you want is multitasking, right? This is a guy you can Templar drop, Zealot harass, while macroing perfectly in the background. So mechanics help you not with overall tactics and strategy. Timed attacks are exceptional, and, and they're the true strength of, of, of Kespa players um, like Stardust used to be, and I think he still shows a lot of the same traits. And also multitasking in the mid game, right? Those two two feats are something that he had better than anyone else from DreamHack because uh, DreamHack players just weren't at that same um, level of mechanics uh, for the most part. Some of them were, but uh, as far as the games that they played, they weren't able to exhibit that same control that he was. So uh, our next question will be from uh, Vincent Termot. It says, uh, as Zerg, how do you defend a two attack, one armor, Zelt, Sentry, Mortal Timing? Uh, I think it may be. It says something similar to what um, Stardust actually did, vaguely similar, um, more upgrade focus. But anytime we see these these three things, Zelt, Sentry, Immortal, uh, one of the best ways to defend this is actually Mass Hydra can work okay. But I, I personally hate Hydras as a Zerg player. So um, the easiest way by far, this timing, you could easily have Swarm Host out. Let's go Swarm Host. You win easily. It won't even be a question. Second option, go muteless. You you base race because uh, they could warp in stalkers. You either kill the armor, you'd base race. Muteless would work very very well against this uh, as well. So either go for those lair taking units or most muteless. The third option is actually what's surprisingly great against this is burrowed roaches. The way you work burrowed roaches against this combination is you do not go for the immortals. So many Zerg players mess up trying to bum rush the immortals with the roaches, and you have to realize. Per cost and hit point, the Zealots actually do as much damage as the Immortals against Roaches. So the key thing is to stay away from the Zealots. You kite backwards. Yes, there's a couple of Immortals there, maybe four Immortals, beating at your Roaches. But you have so many Roaches, it's not that big a deal. If you kite away from the Zealots, constantly stutter step so the Zealots can't actually attack, you're going to win easily. Now that's where the Sentries come in here. Like, wait a minute, they force field behind the Roaches, then I'm stuck and the Zealots chop me to pieces. That's why if you're going to go mass roaches against this composition, you got to get burrowed roach movement, burrow under the force fields, come up on the side, then shoot the zealots yet again. So roaches with, with micro can beat this. Otherwise, swarm hosts or muteless are your best friends. This wraps up the Q&A section. Uh, of course, this wraps up the entire episode of Rules of Engagement. Of course, we'll be back again tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern, more WCS content, another episode of Rules of Engagement will follow. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.